what does it take to balance? More importantly, what does it take to adapt into a balance? Whether you are walking to class, riding a bike, or participating in a sport, balance is an example of an autonomous series of movement patterns known as dynamic systems theory. Newell and colleagues proposed motor development contained three constraints, task, organism, and environment. Task constraint is accomplishing any given, well, task. You may be familiar with escaping the labyrinthic depths of Jarrah's Hall, free to roam the beautiful outdoors. But what if you were required to leave on a balance beam? Adjusting one's elevation and space to walk changes the overall task constraint. Our second organism constraint are the structural and functional movement patterns. Consider, for example, the workout known as farmer's carry. Both the mental and physical constraint of farmer's carry affects the body's individual composition with weighted artifacts. Additionally, we constrain walking to a balance beam. The overall gait changes with greater focus and lower speed. The environment assures a constantly unpredictable constraint. An audience, for instance, is an environmental constraint that can cause change in performance. Unexpected disruptions may also be a factor. <laughs> but let's not forget why we are here. We are here to learn about dynamic systems theory and the combination of all three constraints. And there is nothing better to show this than the leisure sport of slacklining. Task constraints can be seen in various measures, like the distance of the rope, height from the ground, or the amount of tension in the line. Organism constraints can be seen by adding weights or artifacts. Audible support may help an individual Don't look down. or surprise them. In conclusion, dynamic systems theory is the adaptation of motor behavior changes through a series of task, organism, and environmental constraints.